Good morning. Welcome to our gathering at First Unitarian Universalist Church of Stockton. We continue in our virtual series during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our celebration of Earth Day, which is a little bit stilted with uh, having to do this in pieces and uh, without you all here with us. But we're glad you are with us now and hope that you will find here what you are seeking. We are a community of individuals holding many different beliefs, coming from many different places, and each progressing on our own journeys of life and faith. We join together in our commitment to care for humanity and to shape a better, healthier, more hopeful world. We promise to accept and encourage all those persons of goodwill who gather here, recognizing that we all continue to learn and grow throughout our lifetimes. We especially welcome and, and stand with LGBTQ persons, even as we seek to welcome all persons of every age, ability, status, and shade of skin. We strive to make our community a place of peace and acceptance, love and nurture, even as we challenge ourselves and others to live more faithfully according to the values of Unitarian Universalism. Opening words, number 417, by Barbara Peskin. For the beauty of the earth, this spinning blue ball, yes, Gaia, mother of everything, we walk gently across your back to come together again in this place, to remember how we can live, to remember who we are, to create how we will be. Gaia, our home, the lap in which we live, welcome us. We light our chalice in appreciation of clear skies and sunny days for the earth which has birthed us and sustains us throughout our lives. Please sing along as you remember the words.
Okay, Jan may be doing this segment, but I'm going to put it in just in case. We hope you are sending your greetings out to one another. We invite you to join in our words of affirmation. We believe in love. Love is the only doctrine of this church. We believe in truth. The quest for truth is our sacrament. We believe in helping others, and, our, and service is our prayer. We believe in the sacredness of life, to dwell together in peace, seek knowledge and freedom, serve humanity and fellowship, and cherish the earth and its creatures, this do we covenant each with the other. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. Sunshine in my eyes can make me cry.
this beautiful book to share with you today. It's called A Love Letter to Our Planet, Thank You Earth by April Pulley Sayre. It's got really, really beautiful pictures, so I will hold them close. Thank You Earth, A Love Letter to Our Planet. Dear Earth, Thank you for water and those that float, for slippery seaweed and stone. Thank you for mountains and minerals that strengthen bills and bone. Thank you for air, even fishy whale breath. Thank you for colors and coastlines and beach. Thank you for tiny and towering. For trees and vines that reach. Thank you for curves and prickles and parallels, for patterns, all shapes that repeat. Thank you for leaves and stems and buds, for plant parts we can eat. Thank you for sounds and storms and seasons, for struggles and pale in-betweens. Thank you for rays and radials and overlapping greens. Thank you for jumbles, ingredients for soil, and bright new growth in spring. Thank you for those that crawl. Yes, all, all, all even for those that sting. Thank you for sunsets. For sky room for birds. For edges eyes can roam. Thank you for beginnings, for endings, for lifetimes. Thank you for being our home. At this time in our services, we share the milestones in our lives by lighting candles of joy and concern.
candle that I lit is for the earth and all her people and all of us and all of our concerns. I invite you now into a moment or two of silent thought, prayer, and meditation. As we celebrate this 50th Earth Day week, we think of all the challenges faced around the world. The places where waters are undrinkable, where there are floods, where there are droughts, where people are living too close together for comfort, where the animals have been removed, removed into small preserves, where so many species have gone extinct. As we support each other in this congregation, we know that we share our love for this planet that birthed us. We recognize our concern for finding healthy ways to a sustainable future. We give thanks for this community and for the earth and for all her inhabitants. So may it always be. Amen. Please join now in singing Spirit of Life, which is number 123 in our hymn. most of you know that I am chairperson of our annual pledge drive. Um, that's what I wish to speak to you about for just a couple of minutes. It does seem strange to me <laughs> this year not conducting our pledge drive in our usual way. Uh, no crowded sanctuary at the church, no nice luncheon that we have provided on this special day for so many years. But one good thing, by now you should have received your beautiful brochure. And the pledge brochure uh, should have been delivered to you this week. Um, and it has a lot of beautiful pictures. And I want you to enjoy the photos, many of them provided by Reverend Bob from his travels. But don't just enjoy the pretty pictures. Uh, please read the text of the, it, uh, get the information that it contains, and think about what it's telling you. Uh, the values of this church, of course, have gone always right along with Earth Day, and in fact epitomize what Earth Day is all about. We strive our best, all of us, to preserve and enhance the Earth and all of the beings who live on it and in it. Likewise, we must strive to preserve our beautiful church and all that it offers, and we need to preserve that into the future. You members and friends of this congregation have been amazingly, amazingly generous in your support of UU Church for the past few years. 
but in order for our church to sustain its current level of staff and activities and services, all those of you who possibly can will need to give a handsome and unselfish increase in your level of generosity for this coming year. Not just what is easily affordable, but maybe a bit of a stretch to afford this time. We're based upon your financial ability, of course. Consider what the church means to you. Consider what this congregation means to you and to the community. And ask yourself what amount you can give that makes you feel good. Not just the easy thing to write the check for, but what sort of a donation to this church would make you really feel good. Fill out your pledge card and return it immediately in the stamped envelope that you received along with your brochure. And remember that all pledge cards postmarked by Friday, April 24th will be entered into a drawing for a $25 gift certificate at Trader Joe's. Lots of good things there. Thank you to all of you for your effort to make a real difference this year. Happy Earth Day. At this time in our service, we share our gifts and offerings. I encourage you to send your pledges into the church office, 2737 Pacific Avenue, Stockton, California, 95204. Thank you for your support. Before the sermon, I'd like to share these words from Chief Self or Seattle, number 550 in the back of our hymnal. We belong to the earth. This we know, 
The earth does not belong to us, we belong to the earth. This we know, all things are connected like the blood which unites one family. All things are connected. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the sons and daughters of the earth. We did not weave the web of life, we are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. Earth Day and Pledge Sunday. This is Sunday, the Sunday closest to Earth Day, which is April 22nd, and this is the 50th Earth Day this year. Since we had also planned this to be our Pledge Sunday, and the environment is so important to all of us, we made the environment the theme for this year's Pledge Drive. Of course, we would have done more to focus on the environment had we been able to meet in person today, but I invite you to think about all the ways that this congregation has worked for environmental justice over the decades since the first Earth Day. According to the Earth Day Network at earthday.org, the theme for Earth Day 2020 is climate action. The enormous challenge, but also the vast opportunities of action on climate change have distinguished the issue as the most pressing topic for the 50th anniversary. Climate change represents the biggest challenge to the future of humanity and the life support systems that make our world habitable. Historically, Earth Day was a unified response to an environment in crisis. Oil spills, smog, rivers so polluted they literally caught fire. On April 22, 1970, 20 million Americans, 10% of the U.S. population at the time, took to the streets, college campuses, and hundreds of cities to protest environmental ignorance and demand a new way forward for our planet. The first Earth Day is credited with launching the modern environmental movement and is now recognized as the planet's largest civic event. The first Earth Day in 1970 launched a wave of action, including the passage of landmark environmental laws in the United States. The Clean Air, Clean Water, and Endangered Species Acts were created in response to the first Earth Day in 1970, as well as the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. Many countries soon adopted similar laws. Earth Day continues to hold major international significance. In 2016, the United Nations chose Earth Day as the day when the historic Paris Agreement on Climate Change was signed into force. Some of us have been celebrating Earth Day all 50 years, while others have joined the effort more recently. One of the things that Unitarian Universalists agree upon most widely is the importance of the environment for all living things. The theme of climate change fits the ecological efforts we have been making for several years, challenging the greatest threat to life on Earth. Due to COVID-19, most of the ways of, of observing Earth Day as groups will be accomplished virtually this year, but each of us has many opportunities every day to walk more lightly upon the Earth, to eat lower on the food chain, to conserve resources, pick up litter, recycle, reuse, and repurpose. Half a century ago, the first Earth Day helped to start and energize the modern environmental movement, but many of the challenges remain, and others have grown over the years. Plastic waste, greenhouse gases, fossil fuel use, ocean pollution, and acidification have all become far bigger problems than they were in 1970. Fresh waterways are better now, but the laws protecting them are being decimated by the current regime in Washington.
Cars, buses, trucks, farm and construction equipment, and train engines are all much cleaner and more fuel efficient than they were five decades ago, but the laws prompting those changes are also being removed. The Environmental Protection Agency, created in 1970, is being dismantled piece by piece under Trump. The most effective agency monitoring and funding super site identification and cleaning, as well as the general health of the environment, is losing scientists, researchers, concerned administrators, and frankly, any chance of maintaining its effectiveness. As the planet reaches the most dangerous phases of pollution and warming from the last three centuries of industrial development, with ice melting and sea waters rising due to higher concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, with hundreds of millions of people living in low-lying coastal areas, polluters are being given a free hand to return to the dangerous practices of the past. We have been seeing the predicted intensification of hurricanes, typhoons, tornadoes, and storms generally, with more frequent flood events. In other areas, we are experiencing longer and deeper droughts, with harder to control fires and longer fire seasons. Many climate scientists believe we are too far beyond the tipping point on greenhouse gases and global warming to stop the continuation of ice melt and seas rising in the near future. Even if we are able to decrease the greenhouse gas production, it will take decades to begin reversing the trends. We have seen how much clearer the air is with so many of us staying home during this quarantine. Just imagine what a serious effort to turn to green energy and mass transit vehicles might take and what it might accomplish. There are lots of changes that many of us would like to see in our society, such as single-payer health insurance and a return to nonprofit medical providers. With the current pandemic, we have seen how many benefits there might be to a little bit of democratic socialism in place of some of the wealth-serving, unfettered capitalism which continues to concentrate power and influence. Similarly, freeing corporations who are subject only to owners, managers, shareholders, and short-term bottom lines to return to the dangerous, resource-depleting, polluting ways of the past puts all of us and our planet at an even greater risk. If we are truly all in this together, there need to be a number of measures to focus on the common good, to return corporate responsibility to a place in corporate structures, and to limit the current pattern of only working for the bottom line. The media, elected officials, corporate boards, and other managers and leaders all once had a responsibility to be truthful and to consider the common good along with the profits for owners and shareholders. In many cases, this might have limited the vast disparity now existing between owners, managers, and workers. Banks were also limited in their investments and expected to pay a decent return on savings while not earning usurious rates of return. The protections put in place after the last recession were intended to protect ordinary people. But of course, most of them have been removed by a Congress of millionaires and billionaires. There are a few aspects of our current economic system which could really be described as fair if you consider the whole range of people from poorest to wealthiest. The beloved myth of Americans pulling themselves up by their bootstraps flies in the face of multiple generations of power wealth and control by the same families. Workers need the protections once provided by unions, and everyone working full-time deserves a living wage. Every corporation needs workers, and no CEO deserves to make hundreds of times 
what the average worker receives. Perhaps the wealthy will learn something about taking care of workers as they try to restart businesses after this quarantine is lifted. Even if we haven't had other planets to compare her with, we know that our blue-green planet Earth is the best place to live in the universe. Generations and generations of each of our families have been born and grown to maturity here. Earth is our home, perhaps the only planet that will ever host humans. We humans have not done very well at preserving and protecting the Earth. We have muddied her waters, polluted her air, used up far too many of the trees of her forests. We have treated the Earth as if her resources had no limits, and left land, air, and water unusable in too many areas, even as human populations have grown toward 8 billion persons. Cities and suburbs have expanded into agricultural and natural areas thoughtlessly, and without any effort to conserve space for other species. On this 50th Earth Day, in the midst of the COVID-19 quarantine, we should take time to think about our relationship with the Earth. We are children of the Earth, and even if we someday travel the universe, it will be using air, water, and spaceships created with the metals and other resources of the Earth. Which is to say that we have been, are, and will always be dependent upon the Earth for our very lives. We have a responsibility to take care of the Earth, to protect her resources, and live harmoniously with the other living beings of the Earth. This pause to our normal lives is giving us a small taste of what a cleaner Earth might be like. Enjoy the fresh air and clearer waters, for it is not likely that we will see them stay that way for long after the quarantine is lifted. The progress made in diesel and automotive emissions and other air pollution is now at risk as other regulations are being rolled back. Similarly, waters will not remain as clean as they are without the protections they have had over the last five decades. As we look forward to a future with 8 billion or more people on the earth, with the likelihood of future pandemics even more lethal than this one, as the interconnected, interdependent communities of humanity leave fewer breaks in time or space between us, may we realize that we are all children of Earth, all connected, all related, all one people. Perhaps that realization will inspire us to work together here in our own country, but also among the nations, working through the United Nations to shape a better, healthier, more hopeful world. On this Earth Day, I encourage us all to walk more gently upon the Earth, eat lower on the food chain, conserve wherever possible, repurpose as often as possible, reduce our use of resources as much as we can, and to recycle everything we possibly can. Live well, my friends, but also live responsibly. Peace, shalom, salam, blessed be, namaste, and amen.
virtually join hands with all those that you have known around you in this congregation and all you'd like to invite. Remember that this church is dedicated to the proposition that behind all our differences, beneath all our diversity, there's a unity that makes us one and binds us forever together, in spite of time and death and the space between the stars. We pause in silent witness to that unity. May the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, may love make you strong. Amen. Go in peace. Go out and protect the earth. Stay safe. Amen.